The Adventures of Tintin, The Secret of the Unicorn, sees the intrepid journalist sailing over stormy seas, piloting planes through treacherous caverns, and uncovering ancient artifacts while being pursued by legions of bad guys, all in the name of a good story. Captain! Who are you again? My name is Tintin. I'm a reporter. Sadly, the underlying platform game is the antithesis of these events. Dull, repetitive, and far too easy. The solid voice acting and appealing narrative might entice fans and kids, but for everyone else, there are far better platformers to sink your teeth into. Easy boy, good dog. You're right, she is a beauty. The Adventures of Tintin follows the events of the corresponding film, in turn based on stories from the original comic books. You play as Tintin, a young reporter who's always on the hunt for a good story. On a whim, he buys a model ship named Unicorn, but he soon discovers there's more to it than meets the eye. It's your job to unravel the mystery behind the ship and fend off bad guys along the way. Most of the game plays like a 2D platformer, interspersed with short vehicular and third-person sections to break things up. Get me down from here! Captain, will you stop yelling? Tintin's abilities let you navigate the game's environments with ease. Too much ease, in fact. Running, jumping, climbing, and wall jumping over obstacles such as spikes, moving platforms, and steam vents are smooth enough, but it never seems like there's any real skill involved in doing so. Your movements are partly automated, which makes the game simple for kids to pick up, but also easy to breathe through several sections without breaking a sweat. That applies to combat, too. A single attack button lets you hammer your way through most enemies with little difficulty, but there are enemies that wield umbrellas as shields, so you have to use underground passages to sneak up behind them. He was just here! The game also shakes things up with puzzles, but they're on the simple side. They include finding levers to open doorways, pushing blocks to reach higher platforms, or using weights to balance seesaw mechanisms. There are also vehicle sections to play through, but much like the puzzles and platforming, they're very easy. One has you pilot a plane through a storm in which you have to avoid tornadoes and attacking planes. Making it through the tornadoes just requires a quick press of the boost button, while destroying attackers is as easy as holding down the fire button and aiming vaguely in their direction. Whichever part of the game you're playing, it's not long before you get a distinct feeling of deja vu. Puzzles and platforming sections are repeated often, so you end up solving the same thing over and over again. And let's hope you're not claustrophobic, because if you're not a fan of crouching through tunnels every single level, you're out of luck. Likewise, the vehicular sections are repeated, so you quickly grow tired of them. Except for a few collectible golden crabs, there's little reason to replay the story mode once you completed it, but the game's Tintin and Haddock offline cooperative mode fares a little better. It takes place within the dreams of Captain Haddock, where you work your way through numerous levels or access via doors in a hub world. Each platforming level has similar challenges to those in the single player adventure, but there are additional considerations, such as using Tintin's harpoon to access hidden areas or Haddock's brute strength to bash through walls and discover new paths. If you're after more of a quick Tintin fix, a challenge mode lets you play through some of the vehicle sections again, only with time limits for making it around the course or shooting a certain number of enemies. You can even play them with the Kinect if you want to, but the motion controls are flaky, meaning there's a 50-50 chance as to whether they'll work correctly and let you properly control your vehicle. It's not all bad for Tintin though, particularly if you're a fan of the comics or cartoon series. What's wrong? You've got a nice cabin. Hold up in the hold. And what I want is my boat back. My boat. The voice acting is great, while the music and animation exude a Tintin vibe that fits nicely with the narrative, even if this isn't the prettiest game out there. If you're not a fan of the fiction though, or you don't have younger children who might appreciate its simplicity, there's little incentive to play The Adventures of Tintin. It's boring. You can sit back and coast through it without even thinking, and the somewhat interesting story is little compensation. Repetitive levels, overly simple puzzles, and poor Kinect implementation just add to the game's troubles. This is your last chance, kid! Where is the scroll? I don't have the scroll.
The Adventures of Tintin The Secret of the Unicorn is another game to add to the pile of movie tie-ins that miss the mark. And it's a failed opportunity to do something great with a well-loved character. Why, thank you, gentlemen. I believe I owe you one.